Thank you so much, Jeannie. That's uh, just a tremendous story and uh, you can certainly hear and understand the passion that, that you bring to sustainability and agriculture. I also wanna thank uh, Leslie, uh, Joe and, and the uh, environmental uh, uh, and livestock and poultry uh, learning community for the uh, opportunity to speak today and talk a little bit about our operation here in Eastern Iowa. We're in Scott County, Iowa over near the Mississippi River. Uh, just introduction again, Brian Sievers, Stockton, Iowa, um, lifelong farmer uh, in, in Eastern Iowa. Our history goes back to about 1851 when my great great grandparents settled just north of where this picture was taken. This is uh, near the little town of New Liberty, Iowa. And I'm standing in, or actually kneeling in a field of cover crops. And I'll talk a little bit about that later, but cover crops have really become an integral part of our sustainability efforts here on our farming operation. This is a, actually a picture taken from a drone. Uh, one of the Iowa State University professors we're working with on a couple of different grants. Uh, this particular prof professor is working with us on a Iowa State University Sea Change Grant Program, also affectionately referred to as Grass to Gas, where we're uh, evaluating the introduction of biomass crops from cover, winter hardy cover crops and perennial prairie into our anaerobic digester system. So it's just an aerial view of our farming operation. Uh, I'll have a few more slides in detail, but we've got two 1,200 head uh, beef cattle confinement uh, buildings that were built in 2011 and 2012. Uh, we commissioned the anaerobic digester, which is somewhat in the center of the picture, basically between the cell tower and the cattle barns. Those are the uh, 1 million gallon uh, each anaerobic digester tanks. Uh, and we're currently in the process of constructing another lagoon style digester that'll be covered with a membrane to capture biogas as well. So I'll talk a little bit about that as we move forward. Uh, this is just the uh, interior of one of our uh, beef cattle confi confinement buildings. Each of our pens, uh, we have a kind of a, a unique setup in our, in our pens. The pens are 50 feet, uh, excuse me, 54 feet wide and, and 85 feet long. And along the outside of each pen, we have fence line feed bunks, like you see pictured here, but also 12 foot of slats that the manure falls down uh, through into what we call a scraper alley that scrapes the manure to the ends of the uh, barn 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then that manure, as it makes its way to the end of the barn, is then pumped over to another pit where we mix the manure with other organic waste streams or substrates. And, and by next year, or actually by the middle of 2023, we'll also be mixing that or organic waste stream uh, or manure with biomass from our cover crops. And then in the center of the pens are, is solid concrete, about a 30 foot wide, uh, uh, concrete pad that we use bedding from corn stover, wheat straw, whatever, uh, you know, kind of uh, roughage uh, or stover uh, supply we can source from either our, our fields, corn fields or, or wheat fields that we uh, have. And we grind those bales up, they're big, large 1500 pound round bales. We grind them up in a bale processor and blow that bedding into the pens for bedding for the, for the cattle. And then eventually, of course, those organic uh, substrates uh, make their way into the uh, digesters as feedstock along with the manure. This is just an, uh, another shot of the cattle barns and then in the background, the two digester tanks. Uh, currently, we are producing electricity from the biogas we're producing, uh, but in the uh, middle of 2023, by June of 2023, we're gonna convert from using our biogas to produce electricity to upgrading that biogas to renewable natural gas where we scrub the impurities out, which is basically carbon dioxide, and then uh, piping or injecting that into a nearby uh, uh, natural gas pipeline, and that will then be sold to buyers, presumably in California as a transportation fuel, so that we can either take advantage of California's uh, low carbon fuel standard, which is where we start to monetize the carbon sequestration efforts we undertake with our anaerobic digesters, and also we'll be able to capitalize and, and utilize the renewable fuel standard, which uh, monetizes the carbon sequestration efforts through the production of renewable uh, liquid transportation fuel so that renewable natural gas can be used as a transportation fuel as well. Uh, you know, it's after lunch, so we can look at this slide, uh, uh, but this is basically the, the consistency of the manure as it comes off of our scraper alleys. Uh, that's directly underneath uh, the slats in our cattle barns. Uh, this manure is goes into a pit at the end of the buildings. We actually add uh, recirculated what we call liquid effluent from the digester tanks back to this to reduce the solids content of the manure so we can then pump that into our digester tanks uh, to be able to effectively capture the, uh, the uh, methane uh, molecule from that um, uh, substrate. 
Recently, we've uh, uh, charted a new path with integration of biomass from cover crops. And then I'm talking basically about cereal rye that we seed in the fall. We then chop that in the spring, like uh, what you might see here. And then we follow that uh, cover crop with soybeans. And so what our, we would typically do is immediately after harvest of our corn crop, we'll seed uh, cereal rye down into those fields. That uh, growth will, of course, uh, establish itself uh, in the fall. Uh, roots will go down, uh, helps keep soil in the place during, during the wintertime. So it improves uh, uh, our efforts to uh, control runoff and, and erosion from our fields. And then after chopping that material in the spring, after it gets to be oh, probably between 24 and 36 inches tall, uh, we'll immediately follow that with uh, soybeans. And there you see an example where we chop the cereal rye and then no-till the soybeans directly into the stubble after that. Uh, this past year, I mean, we, we didn't actually chop our cereal rye until about the 1st of June this year. Uh, these were soybeans uh, that wound up producing about 75 bushel an acre. This is a very busy slide and I won't go through a lot of detail, but the whole point of this, this was actually put together by Dr. Lisa schulte at Iowa State, who's in charge of the Sea Change Program, and is also working with us on a new grant that uh, our new partners on our digester have recently received through the USDA called the Partnerships for Climate Smart Commodities. Uh, we received an $80 million grant where we're gonna continue to uh, evaluate the more rapid adoption of biomass as a feedstock for anaerobic digesters along with livestock manure. Um, so let's, let's move on and we can come back to this if need be. Bottom line is this, these are our new partners. Uh, on my right, uh, I'm there in the center is Rudy Raceline, who's the founder and uh, chairman of the board for Raceline and Associates and also uh, Raceline Alternative Energy. And then to my left is Chris Roach, who's the president of Raceline Alternative Energy. And there, there are new partners on our anaerobic digester. And immediately behind us is a field of corn stalks that we seeded down in February of last year to prairie, 37 acres of prairie. It was a highly erodible field. We had a number of, I think, 11 different terraces with tile inlets. And then we um, uh, have seeded that down prairie, to prairie. And the goal is in year two, we will uh, chop that in, in late summer, early fall, probably around September 1st, uh, to harvest that biomass from that prairie and use that as a feedstock to our digesters as well. The whole point of this is we'll uh, actually enhance our ability to sequester carbon through these efforts uh, and to be even more sustainable with our entire farming operation.